Hey everybody, we're here with our first video for Chapter 7. Uh, going to be taking a look at Section 7.1 today. What is a sampling distribution? This section is really, or this chapter is really the connection between our conversation that we've been having on probability and the next phase of what we're going to be talking about, which is inference. As you see, we have a lot of objectives just for today here. A lot of definitions. We're going to first make sure we understand the difference between a parameter and a statistic. We're going to use the sampling distribution of a statistics to evaluate a claim about a parameter. We're going to distinguish among the distribution of a population, the distribution of a sample, and the sampling distribution of a statistic. Things which right now probably sound very similar, but their differences are very important for moving forward. We're going to determine whether, a, whether or not a statistic is unbiased, um, and we're going to describe the relationship between sample size and the variability of a statistic. Now, when we talk about doing statistical inference, what we're trying to do is we're trying to get information about a population from just a sample. So down here we see the whole population, but we can't get all of that information from the population. So we take a sample. Now that sample, we collect the data, we hope it's representative, and then we make an inference about the population. So it's this circular process here to learn about the population. Now it's important to make sure we understand the different words that we're going to be talking about. When we talk about a parameter, that's a number that describes something about the actual population. We've talked about parameters in the last few sections talking about random variables and their parameters. But when we just are talking about a statistic, that's a number that describes the characteristics of a sample. And when we talk SNP, we want to make sure we keep those two things together. So a statistic comes from a sample, a parameter comes from population. We know mu, that's going to be the parameter for mean, and x bar is the statistic for the mean. We know that P is the uh, parameter for population proportion, but P hat is going to be the statistic from a sample. This p hat, we haven't seen before, but it's just like y hat when we talked about linear regression, where it is a, an estimated value for p. Now, when we talk about sampling variability, we understand that, <clears throat> excuse me, when we take different samples, we're going to get different results. There's going to be some variability within that sample. But what we want to think to ourselves is, what if we could take every possible sample if we could take as many possible samples of the same size as we could, well, if we did that and then we computed the mean and the standard deviation of all of those samples, that's what we'd be talking about when we refer to the sampling distribution. And this definition is very, very critical. Make sure you write it down and make sure that you um, understand it as we go through. The sampling distribution of a statistic is the distribution of values taken by the statistic in all possible samples of the same size from the same population. Again, it's very, very important that we understand the concept behind this. We're not taking all possible samples of the same size, but we're thinking of our one sample as one sample from this sampling distribution. And once we think of it like that, then we can start to apply some properties that we'll be talking about moving forward. Now, we could look at simulation to try to understand what's going on with this here, but again, we're just going to be focusing really on the conceptual understanding. So up here we're talking about sampling distribution versus population distribution. There's really three different distributions we could be talking about here. We could have the population distribution. That has all values in it, and that's the real, the true data. Okay, those are parameters. When we talk about the distribution of a sample, these are statistics. This is just from one sample. But when we, th when we think of a sampling distribution, it's kind of like putting the two together. It's the idea of taking all possible samples of the same size and thinking of them to give us information about the population distribution, like we see right here. Let's just say the population distribution looks like this, where half of the outcomes are red and half of them are blue. Now, if we were to take multiple samples, like this first one at the top, we see here it's not 50-50. There's sampling variability here. In fact, the p hat, which is going to be the proportion of red, whatever it is that we're talking about here, 
that's only 40% when the expected P was 50%. In the second SRS, notice it's the same size, size 20, we get a P hat of 0.55. 55% of them were red. And in the third SRS, the third sample, we get 65% of them were red. Now, if we were to take this many, 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 many times, we would see a distribution that looks something like this. And you're thinking already probably that it looks approximately normal, because it is. Uh, now, there are certain conditions that need to be met in order for this to be true. If you think back to when we were talking about binomial distributions and how they could be approximately normal, then we could understand what those conditions might need to be. So, but the idea here is that notice it's centered at the true mean 0.5. And those are the most likely outcomes, values close to 0.5. And if you get farther away, it's possible you can get values, say, as low as 0.15 or as high as 0.8, but it's very unlikely to happen. When we go to describe these sampling distributions, well, what do you think we're talking about? We're talking about shape, center, and spread, just like we talked about when we were describing any distribution back in Chapter 1. When we talk about the center, we want to know, are these values biased, or are they unbiased estimators? If something is unbiased, then that means that the mean of the sampling distribution is the same as the mean of the population. If it's biased, then it's not the same. And we can talk about why that might be. As in the chips example, we collected many samples of size 20 and calculated the sample proportion of red chips. How well does the sample proportion estimate the true proportion of red chips equals 0.5? Well, if we look again, notice that it is centered at 0.5, so we would refer to this as an unbiased estimator. A statistic used to estimate the parameter is an unbiased estimator if the mean of sampling distribution is equal to the true value of the parameter being estimated. So since the mean appears to be close to 0.5 here, and the true mean is 0.5, it's an unbiased estimator. Now when we talk about spread, obviously lower variability is better because we don't want to have a lot of uh, variability because then how much does one sample really tell us? This says to get a trustworthy estimate of the unknown population parameter, start by using a statistic that's an unbiased estimator. So we know that. We already did that when we had our 0.5 as our center of a sampling distribution. This ensures you won't tend to overestimate or underestimate. However, using an unbiased estimator doesn't guarantee that the value of the statistic will be close to the actual parameter value because there's still going to be some variability. But what you can do is you can help yourself out by increasing your sample size. If we had a sample of size 100, You'll notice that in this particular example, it's centered at 0.37, which happens to be the true population proportion. But you could get as low as 0.22 or as high as 0.52. So any individual sample could steer you in the wrong direction with understanding what's going on with this population. But if you increase from 100 to 1,000, taking 1,000 as your sample size, then you'll see that you get much, much closer to that true value of being 0.37. It's the same idea as the law of large numbers. Now, more about describing sampling distribution. It says there's general rules for describing how the spread of a sampling distribution of a statistics decreases as the sample size increases. Basically, the idea is that you need to understand as sample size increases, standard deviation decreases. Right? And it's determined by the size of the random sample. Larger samples get smaller spreads. The spread of the sampling distribution does not depend much on the size of the population. So it doesn't matter if we're comparing, say, the populations of uh, America to the population of Granada. As long as your population is at least 10 times the sample size, the larger the sample size, the smaller the variability. So that's the idea. This, this idea right here, this 10 times rule, that's the condition of independence that we talked about when we were dealing with random variables. Here it is again dealing with these sampling distributions as well. A little bit more about bias and variability in shape. What we see over here on the right are four different bullseyes. And you want to think of the bullseyes as the center of the bullseye is if you have your sampling distribution, uh, if its mean is the same as the population mean. And if you look at in A here, we see that the values are nowhere near the center. So we refer to that as high bias. But the values are really close to each other, so that's low variability. The one over here on the right for B, it is centered around the true mean, even though there are no values very close to it. But that does have low bias because it's centered around the true mean, but high variability because they're very spread out. If you look at the third one here, C, not centered in the middle, so high bias, and very spread out, therefore high variability. 
The last one, D, that's the ideal situation. There's no bias because they're all centered around the true mean. And there's very low variability because they're all very close to one another. So this kind of uh, bullseye explanation is giving you a conceptual understanding. But you could think of this as a, a bunch of histograms as well. And uh, we'll take a look at that in class, actually. But again, bias means that their aim is off. Variability refers to how scattered the points are from one another. So that's it for this video here, okay, on this first section, 7.1. We talked about the difference between a parameter and a statistic. We talked about how to use the sampling distribution to evaluate a claim. We distinguish between the distribution of a population, of a sample, and the sampling distribution. We talked about whether or not a statistic is unbiased. And we described the relationship between sample size and variability of a statistic. So a lot of concepts in this first video, and you want to make sure that you got them down because in the next two videos, we're going to be talking about how they work specifically and how we do some calculations with it as well. That's it for today. See you next time.